Normal moves, like walking and uh, breathe at them. Give them an old punch. Uh, wait, no. Uh, well, I guess, uh, but not a trained punch. Oh, uh, jump on them. You know, you know, typical attacks that animals do, like scratch and bite. Wait, no. Uh, okay, the way typical lawful good animals fight, like with tackles. Animals do that, right? Today, we're going to go over and explain every normal type move in Pokemon. And considering just how magical the Pokemon world is, there can't be that many normal moves, right? Oh. Uh, there are a lot of normal type moves, and normal moves aren't even moves, are they? Or are they like the most moviest moves of all the moves? Like what even is normal? Well, it's an adjective technically, meaning conforming to a standard, usual, typical, or expected, common, not a surprise, generic stuff. So normal seems to be just what we think normal is. But when we're talking about the Pokemon world inhabited by these crazy insane Pokemon creatures with redonk powers, breathing fire is perfectly normal for them. But we could talk forever about these strange definitions and how infinity energy manifests itself as plain, but that's not this video. At the end of the day, Miltank is just a cow humans use for milk. It's on every continent in the Pokemon world as of this video, and it's not really anything special, so it's normal. And it's really good at doing normal things, like normal moves, because it's normal. One other thing that makes normal moves special, or rather, not, uh, is that just about every Pokemon can learn some normal type moves. They can recreate the actions that lead to the moves because it's a normal everyday thing to do. Like, think belly drum. Yeah, they probably all have a belly and some way of drumming on it. So that's sort of normal, right? However, the special effects specifically might be unnatural and take some level of know-how to do properly. You gotta be especially good at drumming your belly to get the magical effects of it. Hence why not every Pokemon can learn it. So now let's get to the moves, but before I start explaining them specifically, I want to let you know, you should probably go get yourself a nice snack if you're planning on binging this and part two and maybe even part three. Who knows where we're gonna go because there's almost 200 of these stupid moves, 197 to be exact, and uh... Well, here I go. In no particular order, but completely organized decently enough, we start with Tackle, a physical attack in which the user charges and slams into the target with its whole body. It's like mega normie, like just ramming into stuff. I'm sure you do it accidentally all the time. It hurts, and typically it hurts both parties, but if you are the tackler actively doing it, you are probably braced for it, so it shouldn't hurt you too much, or at all if you know what you're doing. But even then, if you really want to do some damage, do a takedown, a reckless full body charge attack where you slam into the target. It's a much harder tackle, so it does hurt both Pokemon. And then there's Double Edge. And no, they don't just magically have a sword. The move goes like this, a reckless life risking tackle. This also damages the user quite a lot. It's named after the saying, it's a double edge sword, meaning something has its positives, but it also has just as many negatives. But I think the original Japanese name gets this move across better. It translates to life risking tackle. Whoa. The Mon throws 100% of its effort into this move and throws caution to the wind. You need to tackle this thing like your life depends on it. Then with Giga Impact, the user charges at the target using every bit of its power. The user can't move on its next turn. We see this a lot in normal moves, just all out assaults of unrestrained power. It isn't classy or fancy, it's just pure energy. And this is just like another big tackle, but it has an explosion at least. They use so much infinity energy to impact the opponent, and it takes such a toll that they have to rest. And that's coming from Pokemon that can cause earthquakes every turn. Think of the energy that's in Giga Impact then if they have to rest. Now, breakneck blitz. Oh, we're talking about Z-moves already. Well, yeah, I mean, with this move, the user builds up its momentum using Z-Power and crashes into the target at full speed. It's just the big go fast. It's basically just a mega tackle, a tackle on steroids, only if it used Z-Power instead of drugs. Now, a body slam. That's just a tackle from above, isn't it? The user drops onto the target with its full body weight. This may also leave the target with paralysis. Did you know that Pokemon is actually fully supported by the WWE? Not the WWF though, they got issues. But this move, just dropping your weight on a creature, no matter your size, is gonna do something right. Well, maybe not if you're tiny like Flabebe or Cutie Fly, but typically using gravity to do your work for you is pretty helpful, especially if you're heavy, like a lot of the normal types are. Because being large isn't like special, like good job, you're big, how normal? Normal. But what are special are signature moves, even the normal type ones. And Pulverizing Pancake is the signature Z move of Snorlax. Z power brings out the true capabilities of the user, Snorlax, and it moves its enormous body energetically and attacks the target with full force. 
It's just a really big body slam, but even slammier, flat as a pancake. A fun fact, pancakes are in fact more round than Kansas. It really is a dust bowl, like actually. Pancakes! And while we're talking about Snorlax, G-Max Replenish is the move Gigantamax Snorlax uses. This move, on top of dealing damage, restores berries that have been eaten already. Man, this guy just eats! But so does everything, honestly. You kinda need to to live. It's very normal. However, this move restores berries that have been eaten because this Snorlax has a berry tree growing on it and everything, so a new berry just falls. Basically, this move is Giga Recycle. You see, with the move Recycle, the user recycles a hailed item that has been used in battle already, so it can be used again. Basic knowledge of any item will produce the added benefit of being able to use it multiple times, if proper precautions are met. I read that on a shampoo bottle once when I forgot my phone. And honestly, this is one of those moves that I could do a whole video on, so I guess I'll save all the details for that, but we gotta move on. What are some of the other food food-related moves. I mean, eating is like the normalest thing there is. You gotta do it to, like, live. Eating is just breathing, but with solids. Does that mean we digest air? With the move Stuff Cheeks, the user eats its held berry, then sharply raises its defense stat. See, eating is a primal and basic thing, only beating out reproduction barely. Also, eating is typically related to healing in most video games because that's literally how it works, only a, a lot, lot slower in real life. Uh, but in a way, you could also say that eating is what creates buffs. In this case, defense. What do you think calluses and hard shells are made out of? Yeah, food. And not being hungry will usually usually mean you have better everything, defense included. The move Soft Boiled has the same idea. The user restores its own HP by up to half of its max HP. It just eats a soft boiled egg to heal. Whoa! It's called egg lay in Japanese though. It's Chansey's move. It lays an egg and eats it to heal. But like, it had to make that egg with the nutrients it already ate, and now it's making another egg with the nutrients it just ate, which came from the egg. Is it a never ending cycle of egg? It's like drinking your own pee. And what rhymes with pee? Tea! With the move of tea time, the user has tea time with all of the Pokemon in battle. Each Pokemon eats its held berry. It's a very British move, and the signature move of Poltegeist. And it's rude to not invite the whole gang to have a spot of tea now in it. It's tea time! Everybody have a snack! And you know what goes with tea? Milk. With milk drink, the user restores its own HP by up to half of its max HP. Mm. Mmm, milk! It does a body good. But does it? Milk was marketed so hard in the 90s that I'm sure Big Milk paid for this move to be added, along with Miltank. And while their claims may be overstated to heck, milk is full of calories, fat, protein, and sugar. So I guess if food and berries heal, why wouldn't milk? The idea of reaching down and sucking your own udder is a bit odd at first though, but cows and goats will actually do that sometimes if there's something wrong down there. With Stockpile, the user charges up power and raises both its defense and special defense stats. The move can be used three times. Creating an energy reserve in the form of a fat stockpile is incredibly common. Fattening up for winter is quite the survival technique. And having more fat does mean there is more padding on your body, so you're more defensive, I guess. It only works to a point, though, before it's doing more harm than good, which I guess is why you can only do it three times. But really, though, while that may have been the inspiration for the move, the move itself is stockpiling energy in a more magical sense. But just look at the Pokémon who can learn the move. Most of them are the species who do just that. They stockpile fat reserves and food all at once. And once they've stockpiled a bit, they have options. If they use the move Spit Up, the power stored using the move Stockpile is released at once in an attack. The more power stored, the greater the move's power. Basically, it's throwing up. But magically! Magical vomit! Or they can use Swallow. The power stored using the move Stockpile is absorbed by the user to heal its HP. Storing more power heals more HP. Much like the other food healing moves, it consumes the energy. Just one big gulp. Another healing move is Slack Off. The user slacks off, restoring its own HP by up to half of its max HP. Basically, it's just taking a break so it can rest. Taking breaks from work or school is amazing for both mental and physical health. Productivity too. So this move is basically that idea, but magical. It's taking a break, which really should be a normal thing to do. Nothing at all to be ashamed of. We all need breaks. And if I keep telling myself that, I'll actually take a break next year.
Now, could a move be more generic sounding than strength? Outside of battle, this is what strong Pokemon use to push heavy things around. Being strong isn't really typed, so normal makes sense. But inside of battles, the move is described as the target is slugged with a punch thrown at maximum power. But if it's a punch, then why isn't it fighting type? Well, the simple answer is that technically, everything with an arm can punch. It's very normal, very standard, but the fighting type punches are much more well-trained punches. Anyone can be strong, but only a truly honed and trained body can recreate fighting type key energy or whatever. So with strength, this isn't some ultra skilled or energy filled punch, it's just like a punch with muscles. Sort of like Comet Punch. The target is hit with a flurry of punches that strike two to five times in a row. Odd, isn't it? The name of the move makes it sound like some huge, powerful explosion of rock careening into the planet with the force of a thousand joules. But it's, it's just a normal type couple of punches. Just two to five punches. Wow. Maybe it should be named Meteor Shower Strike or something? Oh wait! I'm sorry. In Japanese, the move is called Consecutive Punches. It's like One Punch Man's mega super move. Just multiple regular punches in a row. Okay, well I think we can put this move to rest then. They just named it something cool to be stupid. Chip Away is also a sort of punch. Looking for an opening, the user strikes consistently. The target's stat changes don't affect this attack's damage. Because nothing says average and normal, like throwing yourself against a wall until you take it down. The persistence of the average Joe. The true normal. Little by little is the move's name in Japanese, and it's perfect, since it's simply doing small yet repeated damage to the enemy, chipping away at any stat boosts they got. It's sort of like a barrage, where objects are hurled at the target to strike two to five times in a row. The Pokemon just throws things? Things that it has? things that it finds on the battlefield, but they aren't rocks, because that would be rock throw, which is rock type. But being hit by thrown objects does tend to hurt. And since we're talking about generic objects here, we also gotta be talking generic types. Slam is also generic sounding, and for good reason. Here's its description. The target is slammed with a long tail, vines, or the like to inflict damage. Like, it's just a slam. It's body slam, but with something other than your whole body. Thing hits other thing. It's normal, just like pound. The target is physically pounded, with a long tail, foreleg, or the like. Or the like, you say. Really, give them a good pounding. Deal some damage, but do it generically. Or at least more generically than tail slap, where the user hits the target two to five times in a row. It's like a tackle, or a pound, or a slam, but with a hard tail. Oh, snap! It's double slap. The target is slapped repeatedly back and forth two to five times in a row. But if it's a double slap, how can it hit five times? Well, because it hits five times twice. It's double, you see. Prepare to get slapped twice a couple of times. But if that math is too hard for you, just stick with Double Hit, where the user slams the target with a long tail, vines, or a tentacle twice in a row. Always twice. Just bam bam! A one-two punch. But with zero training, so it's generic and normal. Just like Stomp, you get stomped on! It can cause flinching, because a good stomp leaves a good bit of lingering pain. Because it's just like, ah, you just got pinched, but between a foot and the ground. Have you ever been stepped on by a horse? It is the worst! And you know what else is a big pinch? Being grabbed, I guess? With the move Bind, Things such as long bodies, vines, or tentacles are used to bind and squeeze the target for four to five turns. So again, it is normal type first because it is generic. It could be wet, watery tentacles, or grassy vines, or just a normal body. All of these things can bind. So to make the move work for all of them, it's normal type. Also, holding someone down takes strength, and being strong isn't anything crazy. It's normal for Pokemon. Heck, I mean, a snake wrapping around its prey. Ooh, how mundane. Another move that's very similar is wrap, where a long body, vines, or the like are used to wrap and squeeze the target for four to five turns. And the move constrict, the target is attacked with long, creeping tentacles, vines, or the like. This may also lower the target's speed stat. However, this is much less of a multi-turn move. Now, I would argue that they got them wrong in terms of naming. Constriction sounds like it should be the damaging and long-lasting turn, whereas wrap or bind should just lower speed. But that's just the naming ideas I have in my head, I guess. These moves are for creatures that have vines, tentacles, snakes, and heck, anything long and movable, even a tail might work. Therefore, it's just normal typing. Another grabby move is Crush Grip, or Grip Crush if you're Japanese. This move is where the target is crushed with great force. The more HP the target has left, the greater the move's power. Another simple move, a lot of these in normal types, spoilers. Yet the move's secondary effect is interesting, referring to how once you crush something, subsequent crushings produce less damage. Think of an orange. If you crush it, a lot of juice comes out, and you damage the rind. But every time you crush
smash it again, the amount of damage is reduced. Less juice comes out. The Ryan is already cracked, so it doesn't really rip much more. Compressing damage is very non-linear. I'm saying it's an asymptote, until it hits a theoretical death point that is already in place as HP. But it's harder and harder to get to that point as you crush. With Vice Grip, the target is gripped and squeezed from both sides to inflict damage. Yeah, same stuff here. With the crushing and the gripping like a vice, which is used to hold things tightly and squeeze stuff. Yeah, same deal. Ring Out has the user powerfully ring the target. The more HP the target has, the greater the move's power. It's the same idea as Crush Grip, except instead of crushing, it's more like twisting until all of the fluids drip out. Uh, like how you wring out a towel. Honestly, this one's a lot more gruesome. With Crush Claw, the user slashes the target with hard and sharp claws. This may also lower the target's defense stat. A pretty straightforward thing to do if you have claws. You can crush people with them. Huh. Based on the name, I'd assume it's like a crab claw, which crushes. But no, look at the mon that can learn the move. This is just regular claws. I guess the lowering of defense is related to that keyword, though. Crush. Bludgeoning weapons work wonders when it comes to getting through and damaging armor, whereas sharp weapons really don't. So I guess they're swiping with the back of their claw? The thicker, harder, blunt part of it? Hmm. Now Scratch. There's a move that uses claws proper. This is the move of every cat in existence. Hard, pointed, sharp claws rake the target to inflict damage. It hurts because you get cut, and anything with a sharp bit can scratch. It's very normal. Then slash is basically scratch, but better. The target is attacked with a slash of claws or blades. Critical hits land more easily. A basic move, like scratch and the like. Typically, slashing weapons in games give crit chance because, well, cutting an artery is way more damage than a typical cut, so if you just happen to hit in the right place, CRITICAL HIT! Then with cut, the target is cut with a scythe or claw. I'm really surprised there's not a move that's just called punch or hit. Really. Then again, tackle exists. Uh, but yeah, it's basically the same too. But this one can be used outside of battle. Ooh! You can use it to cut down baby trees. Like, what's up with Lieutenant Surge's entryway? Just why? With sharpen, the user makes its edges more jagged, which raises its attack stat. Making your weapons sharper seems like a normal act. Cats regularly sharpen their claws on trees, scratching posts, furniture, hopes, and dreams, because the repeated friction hones the edge to a refined point, makes the attack better. Then Fury swipes. The target is raked with sharp claws or scythes quickly two to five times in a row. Like when a cat goes nuts on a dog that just wants to sniff it. Personal space! Then False Swipe, not to be confused with Fury Swipes. It is a restrained attack that prevents the target from failing. The target is left with at least one HP. And with a Japanese name of To Strike With The Back Of The Sword, I'm not kidding that's its name, it's sort of an easy no-brainer. It holds back, leaving the target alive. So like another cat thing, it's playing with its food. Then Fury Attack, the target is jabbed repeatedly with a horn or beak two to five times in a row. It's just Fury Swipes, but with not claws. Then Spike Cannon, sharp spikes are shot at the target in rapid succession. They hit two to five times in a row. It's the same, but with spikes launching at the target, like a porcupine launching its quills. And then, guillotine. Oh, the stakes have been raised. Get them off the ceiling. This is a vicious, tearing attack with big pincers. The target faints instantly if the attack hits. Well, yeah, that's how guillotines worked. If they hit, and they usually do, you die. Now, a move like this, again, it's generic. It could be a crab claw, making it watery like crab hammer. It could be a bug claw, so bug type. It could even just be a sharp blade, like with fracture or cartana. So the move itself then is normal type to be fitting of all of them. Also, how sick is this move's animation? Now, Growl. The user growls in an endearing way, making opposing Pokemon less wary. This lowers their attack stat. Oh wait, hang on! That's completely different from what I thought it was when I was a kid! I thought growling was spooky and intimidating like a growling dog! So it made the opponent unnerved and unable to attack with full strength because it's like kinda scared! And when you're scared you do things fast and not the best, you know? Like punching a spider that snuck up on you. <laughs> Well, it turns out that this oddity is because of the Western localization team. They decided to call it Growl, when in Japanese it's actually Cry. Like, those are totally different! Yet, both of them do make sense because there always has to be an explanation, and young child me is really good at making things up, I guess. But why do tears make you less weary to attack? Well, I guess that's because of your empathy. Typical social creatures see crying as a way to de-escalate aggression. Like, it actually works in humans too. Tears contain chemicals that reduce testosterone levels typically. In fact, this is so true that we even have a second move for it. Tearful look. The user gets teary-eyed to make the target lose its combative spirit. It lowers the target's attack and special attack stats. Oh! 
But still, that has nothing on Tail Whip. Tail Whip is the most confusing move in all of Pokemon. I swear, I never understood it as a kid. Like, how does whipping someone with a tail just lower their defense? Are you whipping them in the eyes to make them hold their eyes, which means their defenses are lowered? Wouldn't that still hurt? Why doesn't being whipped hurt? Even just being cacked in the nads by my dog's tail. That hurts, and it's not a Pokemon. Needless to say, I never read the descriptions of the moves as a kid. I just saw the name and effect, but the Japanese name gets it across better as it translates to tail wag. That's what it's doing. The user wags its tail cutely, making Pokemon less wary and lowering their defense stats. It's very, ooh woo, look at me, I'm not a threat, don't be defensive against me. And then blam, you're upside down in a suplex. And speaking of ooh woo, with the move attract, if the user's opponent is the opposite sex, the target becomes infatuated and less likely to attack. Just like real life attraction. It isn't special at all, it's a very normal part of life, as it typically leads to more life. It's like the second most normal thing, only beaten out by absorbing sustenance through eating and breathing. So that's why it's normal type. And it basically just goes by the logic of, you don't really want to hurt your crush, right? Maybe you should go easy on him. It's the same logic for the move Captivate. If any opposing Pokemon is the opposite sex of the user, it is Charmed, which harshly lowers its special attack stat. It's just attract with different effects. And then finally, there's G-Max Cuddle, a normal type attack that Gigantamax Eevee uses. On top of dealing the usual damage, this move in fact Infatuates opponents. Basically, it's a mega version of Attract. See, it's so normal that there are three moves that talk about the primal need of love. With Covet, the user endearingly approaches the target, then steals the target's held item. One of mankind's greatest downfalls is their inability to be truly good. It is only normal for someone to covet another's goods or life. I mean, it's one of the Ten Commandments, right? That means it's a super normal thing to do, so you gotta not do it. But animals, they do it all the time. You see birds and squirrels stealing each other's things constantly. So, Coveting held items, I'd imagine, is super common to wild Pokemon. Seeing another Pokemon holding a gift from its trainer friend, they want that. In fact, Pokemon wants to be captured and hang out with trainers even, so they're quite covetous of your Pokemon's life. So they act all ooh woo and approach. You let your guard down because they're cute and just approaching all cutely, and then oops, they stole a thing. Follow me is sort of a woo. The user draws attention to itself, making all targets take aim only at the user. Look at me! I am cute! So cute and innocent that I make an easy target! Hit me! I'm normal! I just love getting hit! That's normal, right? I'm not into anything weird! In this universe, it's totally expected to be into getting hit! Yeah? With the move Encore, the user compels the target to keep using the move it just did for three turns. B -b please don't stop! Not exactly sure how this move works without some psychic shenanigans, but I guess just through taunts or cries of encouragement, they compel the other to show off that thing they just did again, but a lot. It's odd, but I guess it isn't super out of the ordinary. Oh uh, yeah! Please more. Then with Endure, the user endures any attack with at least one HP left over. P -p please one more time, I can take it. Uh -huh. It's a perfect move to use right before a great big attack or right before you use Endeavor. A tag team made in heaven, really. However, it's not unnatural for a Pokemon to endure an attack. Heck, sometimes Pokemon hang on just because they love the trainer so much. But speaking of Endeavor, this attack cuts down the target's HP to equal the user's HP. It's the most powerful move in existence. I mean, it's a no-limit move. No matter the health or the defenses of the opponent, it's now the same as your Rattata. It's called Daredevil in Japanese, as it seems to be based off of a pure dare. However, the English name Endeavor is much less direct. An Endeavor is something you do to try and attempt to achieve something. Basically, it's a very hard thing that you want to do, so it's sort of a last-ditch effort, a last chance at lowering your opponent's health because yours is low, you're about to get taken out of the picture, so try and take them down with you. There's something to endeavor to. Then with Double Team, oh please yes! The user makes illusionary copies of itself to raise its evasiveness. Ah uh, yes, it's clone jutsu, but worse. Uh, being based off of the after image trope in anime where someone is moving so fast that you see where they were but not where they actually are, basically they are moving faster than light, that's what that means. And really, you wouldn't be able to even exist next to something that is doing that. Think of the energy and shockwaves emanating from the object moving around you, pushing the air aside, destroying your surroundings for miles. But I suppose speed isn't inherently a type, so it's normal. Now, all right, that's enough with these two. <laughs> With Baton Pass, the user switches place with a party Pokemon in waiting and passes along any stat changes. Taking turns is normal, okay? We're taught about it as wee 
tots. Plus, really, this is more of a trainer move. Wait, that's a fun idea. The trainer knows how to manipulate the ball to keep the status effects on their digital fighting monster. Basically, training as a trainer would have you trained in how to execute what you've trained in. So I guess it might be pretty typical for a trainer to be able to know how to do this and train their Pokemon this move. They are called trainers, after all. I guess only certain Pokemon have the right properties for the trainer to be able to do this, though. Hmm. But speaking of trainers, um, here's a secret for you. From playing Pokemon Emerald all the way through Moon, I uh, I always played as the girl trainer because I, I just thought they were cuter and more relatable. Um, please keep this dark secret between us. Aha! And now you're distracted thinking about my deepest secrets! And that's the move, Confide. The user tells the target a secret, and the target loses its ability to concentrate. This lowers the target's special attack stat. Look at that, Mom! I'm a Pokémon now! Ha 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 ha! Using moves! But if a normal human like myself could do that, can't anything that talks use this move? Pokémon included with their own language? I guess that's what makes this a more normal move instead of dark. Now Facade. This attack move doubles its power if the user is poisoned, burned, or paralyzed. If a Facade is a fancy term for a mask or fake, a long lie, dramatic untruths. And here we see that the Pokemon seems to put on a facade that it is more hurt than it looks before unleashing a tackle. And when it's aided by a status effect, the facade looks all the more realistic, so it catches the opponent even more off guard. Then, Fake Out. This attack hits first and makes the target flinch. It only works on the first turn the user is in battle, though. It's different than Sucker Punch because it's actually a slap. In Japanese, the move translates to slap hands. In the anime, it's seen as a huge clap at the beginning of a match, typically with a big shockwave of energy. It's based off of the Neko Damashi, which is a sumo technique where you clap loudly to cause your opponent to flinch or close their eyes to give you a head start. And Neko, also being Japanese for cat, is why every cat Pokemon can learn this move. How fun. Now, what is camouflage besides lying about your looks? With the move camouflage, the user's type is changed depending on its environment, such as out on the water, in grass, or in a cave. Interestingly enough, this move used to be the signature move of Staryu, likely because sea stars are masters of camouflage. But really, anyone could be a master of stealth. It's another basic survival trait that many different species have evolved over the course of our planet's history. From a gecko looking like a leaf, to a bug looking like a leaf, or baby birds looking like a leaf. Lots of leaves. It's normal. The attack faint is not the Pokemon pretending to faint, because it's the other faint. To faint is to make a pretend blow or kick, typically to force your opponent to take a defensive option, which then causes an opening for the to actually attack. It's like dash dancing in Smash Bros. And even a well-trained, heavily defensive opponent will act out of reflex, and this is why the move goes through things like protect and detect. Even if they are focused on defending themselves, a feint will get through. Their reactions leave openings. It sounds frustrating. So let's talk about the move frustration. You know, like realizing Game Freak is very capable of creating one of the greatest games of all time, but instead they settle for this. It's frustrating. This full power attack grows more powerful the less the user likes its trainer. Which is not a normally touched on topic for Pokemon. In fact, I feel like that's why they removed it in Gen 8. However, it is normal to feel angry and frustrated. So geez, Game Freak, you're kind of being hush-hush about feelings, dude. The move is interesting, though, because it's stronger or weaker depending on a Pokemon's friendship level. And fun fact, the opposite move, Return, is always stronger than this move. So it's like friendship is stronger than anger. Normal type lessons. Actually, speaking of return, it's described this way. This full power attack grows more powerful the more the user likes its trainer. So it's the same, but different. However, like I said, because of math, it's actually always stronger than frustration. Because love and friendship, IDK, something stupid, like egg bomb. A large egg is hurled at the target with maximum force to inflict damage. And before you say, oh, it's just an egg. No, dude, eggs hurt a lot. <laughs> Ow. First, the force you have to throw an egg to break it. That's a lot, and it's at maximum force, so we're talking well past that. Then there are the cuts from the sharp shells shattering against your skin. And then there's the yolk. Oh, the sticky! And the salmonella! Oh, and did I mention that it's a bomb? Yeah, it just straight up explodes. It's totally normal for creatures to just, you know, just pop out an egg really casually. But it is not normal for it to contain dynamite. What have you been eating? Well, I guess non-fiery explosive forces are considered normal normal because we also have the move explosion. The user attacks everything around it by causing a tremendous explosion. The user faints upon using this move. Just boom! A violent explosion of energy transmitted outwards as a shockwave. That's the definition of an explosion. Considering every Pokemon's very life force is powered by infinity energy, I suppose some of them can shoot it out all at once, which would cause them to faint, but also explode. I guess that's normal for some Pokemon to do. I feel like this move is normal out of technicality, like a rocky explosion from Golem. That would make sense as rock type.
type. It's like a frag grenade. But then there's also electrical explosions from electrode, poison gas explosions from coughing, and so on. So for the move to fit all of them, it gets none of them. Explosion is normal type. Now, I'm sort of surprised Harden isn't bug type since it's so synonymous with Metapod and Kakuna, though I'm sure that's only because of that one early episode. The user stiffens all of the muscles in its body to raise its defense stat. So it's similar to defense curl, yet instead of fetal position, it's more so just tightening its muscles to brace for impact, protecting your softer insides. It's generic, so a lot of things can do it, so it's normal type. Though I'm sure some of the Pokemon who learn it are more so just hardening their outer shells or defenses, rather than just flexing their muscles though, like again, like Metapod and Kakuna. Now Porygon, there's a Pokemon that's completely unrelated, but its line has some normal type signature moves. Conversion and Conversion 2 Electric Boogaloo. With Conversion, the user changes its type to become the same type as the move at the top of the list of moves it knows. It's similar to Camouflage, but it has some more control over it. However, this move really is nothing normal. It's not common for Pokemon to change type, yet at the same time, I guess, Porygon isn't normal. Or, I mean, it technically is normal type, yes, but it's not a normal normal type. It's not even normal to exist. It's made of data, yet it's not electric for some reason. It possibly, it's because it isn't actually data when actually in the real world out and about. Rather, it was just created digitally and the person modeling it works as Game Freak's tree modeler. Hmm. Well, the move is normal type because Porygon is normal type. And Conversion 2! Porygon 2 changes its type to make itself resistant to the type of the attack the opponent used last. It isn't like a direct upgrade to the first one. In fact, it's similar, but not a second edition. It's like more of a sequel. Something sort of the same, but it does not capture the same spark that the first one had. Wow, this move really is normal. It's just blockbuster movies. Sad. Porygon also knows Tri-Attack. The user strikes with a simultaneous three-beam attack. It may also burn, freeze, or paralyze the target. Again, we have a move that is more than one type, so it's classified as normal. When really, it should be fire, ice, and electric, but you can't really mix those. But it is neat that it's those three. It's the three offensive magic types. This is just like the legendary birds, and even the Gen 1 Eevees if Vaporeon was cooler. Speaking of, with extreme Evo boost, Eevee obtains Z-Power and gets energy from its evolved friends, which boosts its stats sharply. Eevee is just so excited that it has so much potential and so many options, so it fights more confidently. It's just so happy! Now using Happy Hour doubles the amount of prize money received after battle. This and Payday are really weird moves. Payday goes like this. Numerous coins are hurled at the target to inflict damage. Money is earned after the battle. Now think of the inflation problems that the Pokemon world must have. And like, why isn't the move Steel-type to fit the metal coins? Where does Meowth get the coins? Are they real or are they counterfeit? Either way, the move is normal, so that Meowth gets a stab bonus with it. And then there's the G-Max move, Gold Rush, a normal type attack that Gigantamax Meowth uses. This move confuses opponents and also earns extra money. And all I gotta say is that these moves leave me confused as well. But throwing money around is an easy way of having to pick up money later. That's a proverb. Entertainment is what you get when you like and subscribe. And it's also a Pokemon move where the user dances with an odd rhythm that compels the target to mimic it, making the target's ability the same as the user's. Uh-huh. Hey, dance with me so that your cellular structure changes and you gain a cotton down or a clear body. Or like, none of these make sense. Yeah, there's magic involved here for sure. But considering it's so broad, it can't really be typed now, can it? So it's normal type. Plus, rhythm, it's a thing that all animals understand, and it's not unnormal to know how to manipulate things using tempo. What is a bit unnormal, though, is hyper beam. The target is attacked with a powerful beam. The user can't move on the next turn. Oh yeah, just blasting a laser of normal. And BD, it's just pure raw infinity energy being blasted out of a Pokemon. Usually the mouth, but also Snorlax's eyes. It destroys everything in its path. And it might be one of the hypest moves in the older games though. Like the animation and sound effect is so hype. So that's why it's called Hyper Beam. Fun fact, most of the Pokemon that learn Giga Impact, the physical counterpart of Hyper Beam, can learn Hyper Beam as well. Normally it's all the ridiculously strong Pokemon like a Gyarados and Regigigas. They just have so much power stored in their bodies. Completely normal power that they just focus into a beam of energy, I guess. With focus energy, the user takes a deep breath and focuses so that critical hits land more easily. The calm before the storm, the inner peace formed to create perfect movement. People really forget that they can take the time to focus and that that will lead them to achieving something better. Then, laser focus has the user concentrate intensely. The attack on the next turn always results in a critical hit. It's much like focus energy, yet stronger. 
I mean laser focus is much higher than just focusing your energy, lasers are precise and need to have perfectly focused optics to be so exact. And now, if you focus with your bio-optics, aka eyes, for a long time, you could call that a glare. And that's a move. With it, the user intimidates the target with the pattern on its belly to cause paralysis. Wait, what? that's not really eyes now, is it? What's going on? Oh, this was the signature move of Arbok at first. That makes sense. Its hood pattern looks like scary eyes. But the older descriptions of the move do mention that it's just eyes. The target is transfixed with terrifying sharp eyes. But now that more Pokemon can learn the move besides just Arbok, they gave it a description that only really works for Arbok? That's odd and dumb. Well, at least in Japanese, the move's name is Snake Glare. So it's actually just a thing. A scary snake staring you down. And apparently, this is an actual thing. We're doing a whole video on it. But yeah, it's a normal thing for snakes to do. Unlike Swords Dance, a frenetic dance to uplift the fighting spirit. This sharply raises the user's attack stat. Sword dancing is rather common in most folk rituals. In fact, it's not just any singular group. Typically, it's called a weapon dance. These ceremonial dances are to recall moments of battle or to prepare for battle, invigorating the fighting spirit. Or perhaps the dance moves are just fancy versions of actual fighting techniques. So it's mini practice before the fight getting worked up. Oh wait, that's the next move. With work up, the user is roused and its attack and special attack stats increase. Getting amped is very vital to winning a fight and working yourself up is rule one of hype training. Speaking of hype, it's Hyper Fang. The user bites hard on the target with its sharp front fangs. This may also make the target flinch, a move that I got mixed up with Super Fang a lot as a kid. Super Fang is where the user chomps hard on the target with sharp front fangs, but cuts the target's HP in half. Both moves use the idea of a basic big bite with big teeth motif, so there's lots of rodents here. Hyper Fang is just a typical bite, but Super Fang seems a little crazy. It's just an asymptote. Screw your defense. You're half dead now. Yet Hyper Fang's Japanese name is Certain Kill Fang. Now that's even more unexpected because it's not a one-hit KO move, and Super Fang is Hatred Fang in Japanese. Why don't we get the cool names? Let me guess. Flail is like Mega Murder Impact or something? Oh. No, it's just wriggling. Well, with Flail, the user flails about aimlessly to attack. The less HP the user has, the greater the move's power. It's one of the more slept on moves, I feel, having a chance of being at 200 power if your HP is lower than 5%. Basically, your near-fainted Pokemon is desperate and is just moving its body around wildly to try and hit its opponent before it faints. So it's just sort of flailing. <sighs> Now then, I'm getting tired, so let's talk sleepy moves. Sleeping is also crazy normal, after all. Using the move Sleep Talk while asleep will have the user randomly use one of the other moves it knows. Did you know? At least 5% of all adults sleep talk regularly, and up to 50% of children reportedly talk while asleep too. Neat. But for Pokemon, that means sometimes using flamethrower while taking a snooze in your trainer's bed, catching the whole thing on fire. The horror. I wish it would just snore instead. With snore, the sleeping Pokemon makes a harsh noise that can also make the target flinch. It is a sound-based move that may still be normal because almost 45% of adults snore, and that's almost half, which means it's so common it's basically average. So it's normal enough. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'm yawning. And, uh... So are hundreds of you now. With the move Yawn, the user lets loose a huge yawn that lulls the target into falling asleep on the next turn. And uh, I'm sure we did a whole video on this at some point, link here. But the basics of that is that social creatures yawn to each other to tell each other to either, hey, wake up, or hey, I'm tired, are you tired? However, it also means we yawn when we are tired, telling others that, hey, it's time to be tired. I'm tired, let's sleep. It's normal to be tired. Don't you want to fit into the group? We're tired here. And you, being a social creature, will be like, oh, I want to fit in and I want to be normal, so I'll also yawn. And now I am actually tired because, yeah, it's totally normal to be tired right now. <laughs> you know what? It's nap time. We're going to finish this video later. So, uh, never stop using your noggin. Hmm. Sleepy.